Uh, welcome to this tutorial on using Spearman's Rank Correlation Coefficient, a statistical test uh, that we sometimes use in geography. And it's a test which measures the correlation or relationship between two variables. And the two variables I'm going to use today are um, magnitude of earthquakes and number of deaths from earthquakes. And if you want to find if there's a, a relationship between two variables, the usual thing to do first is to plot your data on a, on a graph, as a scatter graph. So you might find for um, all your different earthquakes, having got the information on magnitude and the corresponding number of deaths, um, you may have a, a spread that looks something like this, and you can draw a, a very crude line of best fit. And you can use your geographical eye and say, well, yes, actually, I think there is a relationship between uh, magnitude of earthquakes and uh, number of deaths. And Spearman's rank correlation coefficient actually proves statistically if there is a correlation or relationship between magnitude of earthquakes and number of deaths. So this is how it works. The first thing you need to do is to create a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis always has the word no in it, and in this case there is no significant correlation between magnitude of earthquake and number of deaths. And then you create the alternative, there is a significant correlation between magnitude and number of deaths. The next thing you need to do is to input your data into a Spearman's Rank table. And this is what the table looks like. Uh, we've got some information here about um, some earthquakes in Italy. Uh, we've got uh, the name of the location here, the magnitude of those earthquakes here. Uh, we have a ranking column, which is empty at the moment. Uh, then we have number of deaths corresponding and another blank ranking column here. And uh, what we'll simply do, we start by ranking the magnitude um, from the lowest magnitude, giving it a rank number one. So if we have a look down here, the lowest rank is in Lazio. We give that a one. And then we go to Molise, 5.9, and give that number two. Now, a trick I use to help keep count of which ranks you use, I write numbers one to 12 down here because I've got 12 locations and I cross off the ranks um, as I've used them. So we continue to rank the um, earthquakes here, like so. Now, when I get to my next number, which happens to be 6.4, you can see I've got two of those. I can't give them both rank six. I can't give one rank six, one rank seven. So I simply find the average of those two which is 6.5. I've used those ranks, so then I jump to rank number 8, uh, which goes to this location here, and I continue. Um, again, I've got two tied ranks, 6.9 and 6.9 there, so I average to 10.5, and so rank 12 goes there. And I do the same for the deaths um, on this side. Now it looks like there's no tied ranks here, so that's convenient. Now having ranked these um, two columns, I need to find what D is. D is the difference between 5 and 6. So I say 5 take away 6, 2 take away 2, and so on. And I fill in this column. And the final column I need to do is d squared, because I've got some negative numbers here, and in statistics I don't want any negatives, so I square these numbers to get rid of those negatives. Uh, 
And at the bottom here, I need to add up my d squared column. That's sum of d squared, and it comes to 51. Uh, 51 is an important number because I need to put that into my Spearman's rank um, formula, which looks like this. It's not as horrific as it might seem. Uh, you simply have to um, break it down. So over here we have Spearman's rank, or RS, you can shorten it to, and at the top, 6 times the sum of d squared over n cubed. n is always the number of pairs of data, in our case um, 12. And so we simply substitute those numbers in here, which I've done, and you carry on through the calculation. And we have a final result of Spearman's rank is 0 0.821, which means absolutely nothing. It is just a number, but it is an important number because it tells us if our correlation um, is significant or not, or whether we can accept or reject our null hypotheses. And this is what we do, 0 0.821, we remember that number. And we need to consult something called a critical values table, uh, which is here for Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. Uh, very easy to read. We look down our degrees of freedom, or pairs of data, in this case, a 12. And we read off to this number here, 0 0.497. If our answer, if we remember, was 0 0.821, if our answer of Spearman's rank is more than this number here, we can be 95% sure or confident that our result is not due to chance and we can statistically reject our null hypothesis. I'll say that again. If our answer is more than this number here, which it is, we can be 95% sure that we can statistically reject our null hypothesis. And if we can do that, that means we can accept our alternative hypothesis, that there is a significant relationship between our two variables. But we can go one step further. We can have a look at this number here. And if our answer is more than this, we can be 99% sure our result isn't due to chance and we can reject our null hypothesis. So returning back to this sheet here, uh, we can reject our null hypothesis and we can accept our alternative hypothesis that there is a significant correlation between magnitude of earthquakes and number of deaths. That is how Spearman's rank works.